Okay, well, let, let's move on a bit more. And I, I think one of the things that I've noted, of course, in bringing you on the show is that you're really well known for a series of lectures that you did some years ago uh, that were promoted through Dan South Africa, in particular, the decompression controversies one, I think was the first that I saw, where you mused on the optimal approach um, for decompression and effectively took an evidence-based approach to decompression. Um, and really use that to refute deep stops, which was a little um, surprising at the time. I know for me, the information you gave was so compelling that I immediately changed my dive practice. I changed my gradient factors and moved my emphasis to, you know, more towards shallower stops. And personally, I think you've done such a good job at this that now deep stops really are refuted and it's almost time to put it to bed. You and I spoke about this at TechFest um, a, a month or two ago. So, But let's give it a few minutes just to put a line underneath deep stops for a moment um, and you know, get your final, well, I won't say final thoughts, but get your closing thoughts um, given my introduction there. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a, it's, that's a pretty good introduction, Steve. Uh, Look, I, the, the point, one of the points I'd like to make is that I'm a scientist and as such, I seek evidence to answer questions. And I also follow convincing evidence that's uh, provided by other, other scientists working in the field as well. So, you know, you, in other words, as a scientist, you follow evidence. Now, applying that process to the deep stops debate because I say, I've actually done very little original work in that area, you know, like I'm not one of the researchers that's actually studied it, but I've certainly interpreted it, uh, that evidence very, very carefully and painstakingly. So if we go back to the late 90s, we were all using kind of Bullman gas content algorithms for decompression. So, you know, non deep stop type approaches. And at that time that you know, people were, were getting decompression sickness when, you know, according to the tables they were using, they shouldn't, and, and Doppler technology was showing that we were forming bubbles after these dives, and people put two and two together and basically said, well, you know, our decompression algorithms aren't working very well, and at about the same time, there was this proposal that the, the so-called bubble models, which, mm -hmm. you know, were supposed to be designed to prevent bubble formation in the first place, by putting um, stops in at deeper depths than the gas content models that we were using, you know that that idea came came into the fore, and people jumped on it because it sounded theoretical, theoretically attractive. Let's prevent mm -hmm. bubbles from forming in the first place. Bubbles cause decompression sickness, so if we can stop them forming, then obviously we'll prevent decompression sickness. And that notion became un virtually unstoppable. You know, like mm. lots of people started putting stops in very deep and the, the, the bubble models, you know, actually prescribed those, you know, they predicted that you would need quite deep stops. So there was this shift towards deeper stopping. And look, the truth is I was on board with that. You know, that the whole thing made so much sense that I was one of the ones who embraced it. And you can find stuff that I wrote around 2000, you know, saying, hey, bubble models, you know, I'm sure that in the fullness of time, we'll have great data supporting this <laughs> because that point is very important. You know, th this whole initiative, this trend that pervaded the entire diving industry actually came in with virtually no, no evidence. It was just, a, it was a theory that was so attractive that everyone embraced it. And then, and so we ran with that for a number of years. And actually, it didn't stop people getting decompression sickness. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't critically examined for quite some time. And then a little bit of data started dribbling out from various places. There was a French study that showed that, you know, bubble models didn't seem to be as good as a sort of a more old fashioned approach in, some, in, a, in a very small study they did. And then there was this big study by the US Navy that, um, that you know, the so-called NEDU study which kind of unequivocally showed that a deep stop approach was not as good as a, a shallower stop approach. And I'm not going to dig in, you know, the whole purpose of this podcast is not to dig into all of that, but mm -hmm. that, that study really rocked the world and it created a lot of controversy. And uh, what I can say is that, you know, the, the answers to the criticisms of that study are out there if people want to go and see them. Uh, the study was actually a very good study. It was a landmark study. They used decompression sickness as the outcome measure. You know, like who mm -hmm. does that these days? You know, that's, mm -hmm. 
that that that's pretty amazing. You know, not just bubbles. They use decompression sickness, actual decompression sickness in their subjects. Mm -hmm. And since that time, there have been uh, several other studies that have also shown the same thing. You know, so what we've got is a, a bunch of evidence that's that's a fundamentally confluent that is showing that you know if you overemphasize deep stops, it doesn't give you the most efficient decompression, which is, you know, the, the least amount of risk for the amount of time that you're going to spend decompressing. And, and there's essentially no evidence supporting deep stops. You know, you, you'd think that if, if, you know, it really was a good strategy, so at least some of the studies, there'd be some, you know, there'd be some equipoise mm -hmm. in the results, but there's not, it's all trending in the same direction. Now, it is very important to understand that every decompression needs its deepest stop, you know, right? So it, it's not that a deep stop, however you define that, is bad. It's just that you don't want to make your stops too deep because you're not gaining anything and possibly losing something if you make them too deep. So the argument really should be not are deep stops bad or have we refuted deep stops? It, it, the argument or the debate is about where should your deepest stop be? Because mm -hmm. every decompression needs a deepest stop. It's just if you put it too deep, then that's inefficient. Because, you know, to summarize very quickly, you're probably taking gas on while you're probably taking more gas on than you're losing if you make your stop deep stops too deep. So the current the current debate is where what's the where's that sweet spot for mm -hmm. making your deepest stop? And I, I actually don't have the answer to that. And that's you know, this is part of that science process that I alluded to just before. You know, we're, we're in this phase now where we think that bubble models probably put the deepest stop too deep, that no one's saying, you know, you should do endlessly shallower stops. I mean, if that were the argument, then you just come straight to the surface and don't do any stops. Clearly exactly. That doesn't work. So mm -hmm. somewhere in between these extremes is, is a sweet spot. And the exact identity of that sweet spot and how to apply it to the myriad of different dives we do is is tricky and uh, mm. you know we still don't have an answer to that i mean people always ask me what gradient factors do you use you know and and i i'm very happy to talk about that i mean i'm i'm sitting somewhere around a gradient factor low of 50 and a gradient factor high of 70 or 80 depending on where i am and if i'm the only diving position in the place but mm -hmm. i quite like conservative and I, I don't really care about spending a bit of extra time in the water if it makes me safer so long as it's safe to be in the water so that's kind of you know that's kind of where I am at the moment but uh, you know that that to some extent is a guess it, it's sort of evidence-based free but a, a bubble model approach or a deep stop approach would have had me at a gradient factor low of 10 or 20 so you know clearly mm -hmm. we've evolved but how far we should evolve in that direction is still an open question. So I, I tend to not say these days, look, deep stops are bad. I'm not saying that, you know, every dive has to have its deepest stop. What I am saying is, and what the evidence says, is that bubble model prescribed deep stops are probably too deep. Does that mean you can't do them? Of course not. You know, lots of people use bubble models and generally are fine. But mm -hmm. if you want to know the truth in the universe about safety, then you're probably safer doing less deep stopping than a bubble model would suggest. Anyway, there's an attempt at, you know, kind of put <laughs> without, without diagrams, as we said minutes. earlier. <laughs>